my party people. Welcome to part two of solving two-step equations here. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Let's go ahead and understand the more complicated side of two-step equations here. So you may be looking at this problem over here, and you may be looking at it like, eh, what do we do? What the heck am I looking at? Don't worry, I got your back. So when we're checking this out, here's the thing. It's always about working backwards. So if you work to understand how you're moving forward, you will always be able to see how to work backwards. So let's go ahead and get this done here. We have n plus seven divided by three equals three. So allow me to write this out over here so I have all the space I need. So n plus seven over three equals three. Now check this out, my party people. Here's what we wanna do. If I'm looking at this, what I'm saying is, hey look, my goal is to solve for n, right? I'm trying to get n. Now what's happening immediately to the n? A lot of folks will say, well, first you divide by three because order of operation says divide by three, right? Well, no, here's the thing. Notice how we have a fraction here. Notice how we have a fraction. This is a fraction, and what does that mean? Well, what that means is, my party people, is that you're taking this entire numerator and then you're dividing it by your denominator. So we need to make sure that we understand that with the order of operations, if we're working forward, we see it like this. First, you start with the n. Then we notice that we're adding 7 to the n. And then you're dividing the entire thing by 3. Then you're, because you think, remember, look, a fraction means you're taking your numerator and dividing it by the denominator, right? That's what a fraction is. You take your numerator, your top, divide it by the bottom. And so if I'm looking at this, well, what's happening, my party people, is that the entire numerator, we have to solve for the entire numerator, then divide it by the denominator. So why does that help us out? This helps us out because now we can see clearly that our first step needs to be multiplying both sides by three. Why is that? Because the last step is dividing all of that, dividing it by three. That's the last step. So the last step is dividing everything by three in terms of working forward. So working backwards, we're gonna multiply everything by three. And once we do that, what do we have? Well, you're working backwards, so it's gonna cancel out. That's the point of doing it, right? The point of working backwards is to cancel out everything around the variable. So that's gone, and we're just left with the n plus seven. And then on the right side, what we have over here, my party people, is, well, three times three, which is nine. Okay, sounds good. What do we do from here? I think we know that this is pretty easy now. This looks pretty simple. Because if we wanna get rid of a plus seven, what we'll do is we will subtract seven from both sides. And I think the hardest question of the day is what's nine minus seven, right? So nine minus seven, that's gonna give us two. And so the answer is n equals two. And that is a. So let's look at another example just like this one. Let's look at another example again, just like that one. Let's take a look at number 59, okay? Let's take a look at 59. So I'm taking a look at 59 here. And again, this, the idea remains the same. You wanna map everything out, understand the forward steps so you can work backwards from the last step. So here we go. We have ourselves the entirety of m minus eight, all of it's being divided by negative three. All of it's being divided by negative three. So what we must do for the first step is understand that while working forward, we're dividing by negative three. So to get rid of that division of negative three, I'll go ahead and multiply both sides by negative three. So I'll go ahead and multiply this by negative three. That's the idea, my party people. We have to understand the forward steps so we can really see what's happening backwards. And there's another type of example that I'm gonna show you in this video, so stay tuned. Hey, hey, before we get to crushing this problem, just wanted to remind you about my ASVAB All Access program. So if you have test anxiety, if you blank out on work problems, if you're frustrated and can't keep a solid study schedule, then this program is there to support you. Long story short, you're gonna be able to text me whenever you need help. You get all of the classes and the recordings so you can work around your schedule whenever you need to. On top of that, you're gonna get access to over 2,000 practice problems that let you learn from every mistake by watching video solutions to those math questions. Not like a textbook where you have to figure it out on your own. On top of that, there are way more features like practice tests, study guides, flashcard sets, all that good stuff. So go ahead, either text me or check out the link 
either somewhere here in this video or in the description. That way you can keep raising your score and get the job you want because that's what you're here for at the end of the day. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Check out the All Access program and sign up and then keep going watching this video so you can keep crushing it. I'll see you there. So here, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna cancel out here because if you're dividing the whole thing by negative three, then multiplying by negative three cancels it out. And then over here we have negative three times negative three. Well, three times three is nine and a negative multiplied by a negative, that's a positive. And so with that said, we have ourselves a positive nine equals that m minus eight that we have right there in that block. And so what's our next step gonna be? Well, we see here that we have m minus eight. How do we get rid of a minus eight? Well, we're gonna add eight. And remember to do it to both sides, that way we're good to go. So I'm gonna add eight to both sides, booyah. And what's gonna happen here is that cancels out. And we have ourselves 17, because nine plus eight is 17, equals n. And there it is. Answer is A. And so again, my party people, the idea here is that we want to make sure that no matter what, we are understanding the order of operations. That's what solving equations is all about, working backwards. So let me show you a different example here where a lot of us, again, will be tempted to, to see this as something that's crazy. So let me go ahead and just take a look at 67 over here. This is an example of a similar situation. You have a fraction, you have another thing happening. Is this gonna be the same or different? This is gonna be a little different, and here's why. Remember, what did I say earlier? The main idea here is being able to map out the steps working forward, that way you know how to work backwards. Here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map this out. So let me just rewrite it so you can clearly see my steps. So B over nine plus five equals six. So working forward, if I knew what B was, what would be happening? Again, take it nice and slow here, my party people. Look, if I knew what B was, what would I do first? In this case, would I add the five first, divide by the nine first, which one would I be doing first? Well, notice that B by itself is part of a fraction. And so the first thing you would do in this case is divide that nine. Again, if you knew what B was, if B was, let's say, 27 or whatever, the first thing you would do is, again, divide the 9, and then you see that that plus 5 is separate. You're adding 5 separately at the end. And so for this one, this is a little different because you don't have a bunch of things happening in the numerator. It's just the B by itself in the numerator. And so, again, this is the art of working backwards now. So what I'm going to do is understand that we would divide by nine, then add the five at the end. So if adding five is the last thing that would be happening, the first thing that we should do is get rid of that plus five. How do we do that? By subtracting five on both sides. So let's subtract five on both sides, giving us what? Well, that's gonna cancel that five right here. That was the point of it, right? To work backwards. And then six minus five, oh man, that's so hard, right? That's gonna be one. So we have ourselves B minus nine, equals one. All right, what's my last step gonna be? Well, what I see here, what I observe, is that we have b divided by nine, so getting rid of the division of nine would be the same as multiplying by nine. And so that's what's gonna cancel that out on the left side, leaving me with b equals one times nine, which is nine. And that's why my answer here will be a, nine. And so again, my part of people, look, this is, this is something that doesn't have to be as complicated as we are thinking that it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 68. Let's go ahead and take a look at 68 over here. So we have negative 17 equals m over negative 2 minus 9. Okay, let's take care of business here. What do we do? Let me go ahead and just show you the steps. Let me map everything out for you. m over negative 2 minus 9. So if we're taking a look here, what I see is that my objective is again, get the variable by itself. Well, what's happening immediately to that variable? Immediately I notice that we are dividing by a negative two, and then after we divide by that negative two, it looks like what's happening after that is you're subtracting nine. So again, my party people, look, are there negatives in this problem? Of course, 
Does that gonna, is that going to stop us or should that stop us from making the right moves? No, it should not. Let's make sure we're being very honest with ourselves because the thing is, the negatives are just numbers. So those are the steps. We would divide by the negative 2. And then what we have up next after that is then subtract 9. So let's work backwards from that last step and say that we are going to add 9. Booyah. From there, that cancels out like we expected it to. And then we have negative 17 plus 9. We should have this practice under our belt at this point, my party people. If you haven't done so already, make sure to go back in this course to make sure that you know how to handle negatives. Negative 17 plus 9 is the same thing as subtracting 17 and 9 and then keeping the sign of the bigger number. 17 minus 9 is going to be 8. And it's going to remain negative 8 because you have a bigger negative number than the positive. So you have negative 8 equals m divided by negative 2. So how do I get rid of that division of negative 2 right over here? How do I get rid of that? Well, the way I'm going to get rid of that is, again, notice the operation, not the sign, the operation. If I'm dividing by negative 2, I can get rid of it by multiplying negative 2 on both sides. So that's exactly what I'll do here. Multiply by negative 2 on both sides. And by doing that, again, you cancel it out because if you multiply by negative 2, then divide by negative 2, you're back where you started, which is the M. That's what I'm looking for. And so then here, you simply ask yourself, what is negative 2 times negative 8? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 8 is 16. Booyah, right there. And so 16 equals M, and that's why B would be the correct answer. And so my party people, let me go ahead and go over one more example here. Let's take a look at number 70. Let's take a look at this one. What way should we go here? Understand that we, again, have to map out these steps. That's the point of this. We want to map these steps out to give ourselves the best opportunity. So check this out. Look, let's be honest. If you want to go ahead and lower test anxiety, if you want to stop blanking out on word problems and actually understand how to use formulas instead of just memorizing them and not knowing what to do, then you need a program that's going to support you all the way. So a program that basically lets you text your coach whenever you need them, a program that allows you to go to classes and watch all the recordings, a program that gives you access to thousands of extra practice problems with video solutions, a program that gives you much, much more than that with practice tests, study guides, and more. That's exactly what you're going to need. Again, I'm Coach Anderson. Reach out to me, shoot me a text, or click the link in the video here to go ahead and learn about my ASVAB All Access program. It's everything my students use to raise their scores and get the jobs they want. So feel free to check it out so that way you can get in on the action too. I'll see you in there. What I'm saying here is that, look, I'm trying to get the x by itself. And in the numerator of the entire fraction, which is, again, we have to handle the entire numerator, we see that we have the negative 8 being added to the x. And then after that, then we notice that the entirety of that negative 8 plus x is being divided by 4. So we need to observe these steps, my party people, because now that we have that, what we're going to do here is this. We're going to understand that I'm going to write this out here. Negative 8 plus x over 4 equals 1. The last step was dividing everything by 4. So our first step will be to multiply everything by 4. Opposite operations. And so with that, booyah, I'll take this and I'll multiply by 4. And I'll multiply by 4. Do the same thing to both sides. And so with that, that is gone because, again, that's what we were expecting, a cancellation. And we have negative 8 plus x equals 1 times 4, and that's 4. So from here, what do we do? Remember, just as I've been coaching you, if you have just a random number sitting by itself away from a variable, so it's not attached with multiplication or division, you can assume it's just being added or subtracted. And so here, a negative 8 means that we're just subtracting 8. So let me just remind you, just to give you a little more confidence here. Remember that 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1. I think that's pretty clear. And so if we have negative 8 plus x, remember, my party people, that's the same as x minus 8. That's the same thing as x minus 8. So if you wanted to see it that way, please do. Please do. You're good. And so what we're going to do is notice that we're subtracting 8. So to get rid of that, we will add 8 to both sides. And so by doing that, we go ahead and cancel that right here. And our answer will be x equals 4 plus 8, which is 12. 
right there. Right there, my party people. So at the end of the day, this is what I want to show you, man. I want to make sure you know how to handle all of these different types of equations because remember, it's all part of the same idea. We are working backwards from the order of operations to give ourselves the correct answer. So if I wanted to go ahead and just show you one more example here, I want to ask you, let's go and take a look at 75. What should we do here? Just take a second. You know, if you want to pause the video, take a second. What should we do here? Well, what's happening here is look, what's happening is, let me just write it out again, negative four equals x over six minus seven. What I'm noticing is that, hey, first things first, the x is being divided by six, and then after that, then the entirety is being subtracted by seven. You wanna give yourself the opportunity to see what's going on moving forward, because now we're gonna work backwards. Break the box down from the outside in. So here, get rid of that minus seven. That's gonna be adding seven to both sides. From there, we cancel out on that right side, leaving us with negative four plus seven, which is the same thing as seven minus four. That's gonna be three. And so from here, we have three equals x over six. How do we get rid of that six? Well, that six is being divided. So working backwards, the opposite of dividing by six is multiplying by six. So boom, right there, that's gonna cancel out. And so then we have x equals six times three, which is 18. And that's why b would be the answer there. And so there it is, my math party people. I want to go ahead and show you again this different type of equation. It's still a two-step equation, but when we're dealing with fractions, you have to understand how you know what steps you're taking first. And as always, it's the same idea. We want to make sure we know what the forward steps are so we know how to work backwards. And so go ahead and move on forward here to the worksheet. We have all of these different types covered already, so make sure to rewatch the video, go into those worksheets, and then go into the speed drills after the fact. That way you can get all the practice you need to be as confident as possible about this. And so with that said, my math party people, I'm Anderson, your math coach. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.